Hey, this is Chase Craig with Own Boise and Keller Williams Realty Boise, and I'm excited to bring to you the market statistics through the end of May 2022 for the Boise area, specifically Ada County. And I know this video is way too long and you will not watch the whole thing. So here's the top three things you need to know. Number one, inventory is up. Number two, demand is down. And number three, I'm gonna answer the question, should you rent or should you own? And I think the answer might be actually kind of surprising to some of you. So if you wanna find out more about that, make sure you watch the rest of this video. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. So first of all, let's dive into the elephant in the room. Inventory is up. Well, how do we know that? It's right there in front of us, right? Take a look at this number. We had 468 homes on the market through the end of April 2022, and we went up 216%. So that is a pretty large jump through the uh, from April to May. Now, let's dive into that though, because I mentioned demand is down. So let's just really dive into it. Like, what does it actually look like? So at the May of 2021, we had 718 homes close and 717 homes pending. So a total of 1,435 close and pending sales. In May, we had 673 closed and 600 pending. So a total of 1,273 closed and pending sales. Well, if you do the math, 468 to 1,015, that's 547 additional listings. But our demand is only down 162 closed and pended sales. So where did those other 400 or so homes come from? Well, that's the question that I really think is worth diving into, okay? First of all, I want to make sure you guys are aware that it is very typical to see inventory increase from pretty much March until around August, August, September. So, you know, every, every year it changes a little bit. Why does that happen? Well, what happens is you got a lot of people coming out and saying it's springtime, I wanna change, I wanna sell. Then what happens is, oh, it's summertime, the kids are out of school, this is a good time if we're gonna make a move, let's go ahead and make it. So you see a lot of people throw their homes on the market. Um, in fact, last year, from April of 2021 to May, we had a 165% increase in inventory. So that's a, that's a very uh, um, uh, interesting number. Now, demand was not down at all. In fact, demand was up last year, but we still had an increase in inventory. And that's just like I told you guys, it's the seasonality. In fact, I have a report here that kind of goes over this a little bit. You can kind of see it. Um, so this is, these are active listings. Let me make sure you can see what this guy is. So pending sales, closed sales, active listings. Well, what ends up happening is pretty much every year, just like I told you, you know, you, you hit your bottom inventory sometime between December and January, and then you start to increase. Same thing here, same thing here. In fact, the only time that it didn't happen was during COVID, right? We hit April, May, June, we had lockdowns, and then we, you know, that's when we saw the inventory actually hit its peak was right around that April month. And then we had people pulling their homes off the market because people couldn't see them. And then of course, when June hit, July hit, the uh, it, lockdowns were done and then boom, the hammer dropped and everyone decided they wanted to live and be your neighbor here in Boise, Idaho. So uh, there's, there's your numbers from August, or excuse me, from last year too, right? Like we just see that trend upwards. So is this something we should panic about? Inventory more than doubled month over month. Um, honestly, it, it's something you wanna keep your eye on, but do you need to panic? No, absolutely not. And, and here's why, this is what I wanted to talk, uh, talk about a little bit. You've got a lot of people that are going to try and sell. And uh, what do I mean by that? Well, the average sold price is 601,000. The average active listing price is 763,000. So I think we all can look at this and say, well, the average active 7063, the average pending 671, the average closing 600. Some of these people will not sell. And a lot of them don't have to sell. So you're gonna see a lot of these homes that come on the market over the next two, three, four months, 
If they don't sell, they're probably gonna pull them off the market if they don't have to. Why would they pull them off the market? Well, if they're selling, they wanna make sure they're gonna to get top, top, top dollar. And to be frank, a lot of them go to their realtor and say, hey, I want a million bucks. And the realtor's like, cool, I want a listing. And they throw the sign in the yard and you know, shake hands and there you go. They ask for a million bucks and, and they got a listing and everyone's happy except for in three or four or five or six months when the seller realizes no one's looked at their house, no one wants to buy their house because it's way overpriced and then someone's gonna be unhappy, probably both the realtor and the seller because neither one of them were able to do what they wanted to do, which was sell a house. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of those, I predict, uh, you know, inventory is gonna spike and we're gonna see a lot of those not sell and actually come off the market. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about in terms of demand down, this is what I'm really gonna be paying attention to is these, you know, closed and pending numbers. So for the next few months, I know we've looked heavily at inventory. We haven't focused as much on closed and pending. Well, it's because we're seeing demand back off a little bit here, right? I mean, we had 717 pendings last year. We had 600 this year. So we're down on pendings uh, relatively significantly. We, we'd wanna see what happens with those numbers over the, over the next few months. Why are we down? Well, it's likely because interest rates are up. You know, as I record this video right now, it's June 20th, interest rates are uh, five and three quarter uh, for a 30 year fix. Last week, I think we peaked at about six and a quarter. Um, the Federal Reserve just increased the federal funds rate and uh, you know that, that caused rates to jump and then kind of calm back down a little bit. <clears throat> so that's, that's a big influence on demand. Now, I told you I would answer the question, should you rent or own? Well, uh, I, I was kind of, uh, uh, I hate to take this path where I'm gonna give you some information, but ultimately you're gonna have to make the choice, right? Uh, which is obvious, right? I'm not gonna make a choice for you. Uh, but should you rent or own? Well, why do we say that? Because as mortgage rates are going up, the cost to own a home is going up. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that if the cost of homes going up, less people can afford to buy homes today than six months ago when rates were around three and a half percent. Okay, everyone understands that. Well, what you might not be considering is where do those people who would have bought go? They would have been buyers six months ago, and now they can't buy, where do they go? Well, what do they do? They go rent. They're renting apartments, they're renting houses. So what does that do? We already have in the Boise area, in fact, nationally, there's already a shortage of apartments and rentals and affordable housing. There's a massive shortage all over the country. Well, that's about to get worse because you have less people that can afford to buy homes, so you're gonna have more pressure on those rentals. What's that going to do to rental rates? Pretty much the same thing that you've experienced for the last two or three years. They will continue to increase. So that's the bottom line. What do you do with that information? I don't know. Uh, I always like uh, the saying I heard from Gary Keller. If you have a good enough reason to buy a house, and you can afford to buy said house, then go ahead and buy with confidence. Don't try and time the market. Okay, if rates dump in two or three years and they get back down into the threes, you can refinance. And if they continue to go up, you're locked in, right? Um, you know, will pricing come back down? I think it could, and I think it could over the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, but some people are saying 40, 50, 60%. And I can tell you, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I was talking to one of the top national builders uh, just a few weeks ago about the economy and what they see. Well, a couple things they gave me, and I don't have sources to back this up, so you can either trust me or go do your own research. Um, but here's a couple things that, that they gave me. And some of this is pretty obvious. You already know it. You don't even have to research. You know, go back to the Great Great Recession, if you will, of 2007, right? It was, a, it was a recession led by housing. We didn't have Airbnb. We didn't have VRBO. Those things were not prominent in any fashion. There was a lot of for rent by owners, but, you know, or vacation, short-term vacation rentals, but it wasn't on a massive level. Now you have millions and millions of homes that people cannot own because they're being rented out right, through Airbnb and VRBO. You also have Wall Street money in the real estate world. 
And what do I mean by that? Well, they're building, these builders are building subdivisions, renting them out and selling them to institutional investors. Some of the big investors, there's American Homes for Rent. I know BlackRock has a lot of money in the real estate world. Guys, those are homes that were built and they cannot be owned by people because they're rentals only. Okay, so that's happening. Um, you also have in 2007, from 2007 till pretty much 2013 or 14, there was millions of homes that should have been built, but did not get built. Okay, on average, we build around a million homes a year. There was millions, I think a couple million homes that never got built on, on, in court, according to our average. So when you combine all these things together, there is not enough homes for, for the demand of homeowners. And so, so could we see a pullback in pricing? Absolutely. Um, is it going to be, you know, their real estate's gonna get cut in half? I don't see it. I don't see it without a massive flood of inventory. And where would that inventory come from? Well, most people that have a 3% interest rate, they're not gonna move. They're not gonna sell their house. Why would they, right? Unless there was some better deal and uh, you know, a lot of these institutional investors, there's a lot of priority talk to you about the pressure on rental rates. Well, if they keep making more and more rental money, why would they list their houses? So there could be some sort of black swan event, which is all that means is something that we could not have seen take place. And uh, obviously that would be the, the thing that, that we wouldn't really know about. Um, but, but at this point in time, you know, the, the last thing I'll give you is talking to one of these large national builders. They said that they, they have about a 15 to 18 year window of being able to build pretty much as many homes as they would like to before supply catches up to demand in terms of the housing market. So that's pretty bullish if you ask me. So for the long term picture, you know, if you're buying a home and plan on owning it for more than 10 years, there's never been a 10 year window where real estate's lost money. It has not taken place. So, uh, and, and I don't foresee that happening in the near future, especially with inventory where it's at. So again, I'm Chase Craig with Own Boise. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm curious what kind of questions or comments or concerns you have about the real estate market. Wherever you're watching it, comment uh, below or reply to us directly. We'd love to help answer your questions or just know what you're thinking. So thanks so much for watching this video and uh, stay tuned for the next one.